So let's go through, for those of you who do email and LinkedIn outreach copy, some of practical insights as to what we could do to quickly improve copy. So I'm sharing my screen. And as you can see, this is a tool that we use. It's called Ulink. It's a LinkedIn automation tool. And I want to walk you through some copy that we've got for a client of ours, Halcyon Eco, it's fine. And I want to talk about some of the ways in which we could improve this copy. So what you'll first notice when you look at copy like this is it's, it's not terrible but there's probably lots of things that could change. And I want to walk through what could change and why I see the things that could change. So the first of all, the reason I can see things that should change is because I have a sales background. It's a function of education as well as experience. And when you build email copy or LinkedIn copy, you're writing to persuade. And there's a lot more than discussing the relative benefits and value of a product that comes and goes into selling, as well as the way that you communicate those. So practically, let's have a look. One thing that we speak about at Pearl Lemon is what's called the read out loud test. More and more people want to communicate in written format in the manner with which they speak because the world is becoming rapidly informal because this is what we have all grown up with. WhatsApping, TikToking, Instagramming, everything. It's all shorthand and all contracted language. So the thing to remember with this before you push back is that English as a language evolves. We don't speak like Shakespeare used to. Italians don't speak Latin anymore. Language is a real dynamic thing. So before any of you are listening, refers me to Merriam-Webster's or Oxford's English Dictionary, appreciate that with the way the world is now, as soon as those things went into print, they're probably out of date because of the rapidity with which way people, the, with which how people move which is why this copy is problematic because who in today's day and age over WhatsApp, for example, or in conversation or in an email and they're trying to build up rapport would say, hi, Frank, I'm eager to discuss our innovative approach to transforming cooking oil usage in the hospitality industry. Let's connect soon. Do all of you see how bad that sounds now that I've read it out loud in line with what I've just said? So I always say, imagine yourself saying that to someone when you are having an informal conversation. The people or the, the preachers that people look to that persuade in today's day and age, whereas historically it was the priests on the pulpits who did the speeches or the gurus on the TVs that do the speeches are now the influencers on YouTube, the influencers on TikTok. They're the people that carry the most persuasion, right? This will be, in today's day and age, Mr. Beast, Conor McGregor, insert the name of your relevant influencer. Are any of the influencers talking like this? None of them are. So we need to change the way that we communicate. Okay? So this is something that we need to really understand. Other things to consider with this. So we've discussed the read out loud element of it. And as you go through it, Hey, Frank, great to connect. We specialize in an intelligent cooking oil filtration system that enhances kitchen safety and saves up to 50, 60% in costs. Our system filters oil to less than five microns. A lot of this would benefit from becoming more conversational. A lot of this would benefit from becoming more conversational. Second to that, this is a more basic thing, but grammar matters punctuation and grammar, even when you're being informal matters because people do like to have the confidence to know that you can move between being the person I'd like to have a drink with at the pub as well as representing me on court. Does that make sense? That you prefer the people that can do both. It's like, you know what? I can have a drink with you and have a laugh, but I know that when the day matters, you're going to perform. These are the people that we look towards and a function of that is grammar. So are you interested in space? Are you interested in company achieving similar results? So the way that you get around that, read, reread, reread, because you will spot the spelling, typo, and grammar issues that come with this outside of the, which is the first point, revolutionize a company's oil management. Also, we need to think about mimicry. You learn this in selling. Speak in a manner with which your audience will understand. Do 
do we think that a anyone working in a fish and chip shop or anyone working in the food and beverage industry would even have something that they consider to be oil management? What do you do with oil management? I don't know. What are you talking about? I put my oil in my fryer. I fry my chips. I take my chips out. I throw my oil away. That is my oil management. What the hell are you talking about? Does this make sense? The smiling faces that I can see. Am I making sense, right? Who talks like that? Who even has that? So what we unwittingly do is introduce language or jargon that is unfamiliar to the people that we're speaking to. That is unfamiliar. Do people that put in oil into a oil machine, a fryer, do they have systems? Do they have a cooking oil filtration system? Let me ask you another question. And again, this is where language and understanding the mind of the prospect, again, talking about selling and understanding relative language. Does a system typically refer to something physical? Probably not. I wouldn't say, I wanna walk you through my system and then I walk you around the park. I wouldn't say I wanna walk you through my system and then I show you a toaster. I wouldn't say I want to show you my system. And then I put this bottle of water in front of you. you say, what the hell, bro? This is a bottle of water. What, 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 what? So system is a terminology that isn't relevant to the end target market. Am I making sense, guys? Now, what will often happen? And I'm going to wrap there or rather. In less than two minutes now, I'll go through other elements before I finish with a concluding statement. I will go through some issues that I think also exist within this copy. So hi, Frank. Hi, Richard. Once you have established a relationship, you move from highs to haze. You don't continue with, hi, Benale. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Benale. How have you been? Hi, Benale. I saw you at the pub earlier. You'd say, bro, why are you being weird for? Right. What is with this high, 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 high? Okay. So highs are at the beginning of relationships and not after. And again, I'm just going to drill in the same point so people get sick of hearing it. Read sales books. Read books on communication. If you want to learn to be a better copywriter than anyone else, read those books because they're the books you should be reading. Not the nonsense about a HubSpot guide about how to write perfect email copy. Those guys probably haven't read it either. And the problem is, is that AI is mass pooling information from the wrong resources because it's pulling from all of the other email templates that are online. The problem that we have in today's day and age is that most AI is derivative content because 40% of the internet content on the internet is actually derivative because the way that it's functioned is that people write better versions of something that already exists on Google, which just involves copying a load of other people. That's why you need to read timeless content. You need to read the originals because then you can do things that even the AI can't do because the way that it functions is to consume the ultimately popular thinking on the internet. And the popular thinking is often not the, the, not the actual route to achieving the outside return on investment, which is why I say, okay, cool. We can do, use AI, but AI inherently is not designed to achieve an outsized result because AI is derivative synthesis. It synthesizes derivative content because mostly the best type of content is often cut, sliced, diced, spun, and reprocessed and then put out everywhere. And is so far removed from seminal content, which is content that stands the test of time, which is why you need to read it. So again, relevancy. Are we contacting hotel chains, a top hotel chain? When we look at the targeting, top hotel chain means multi-million dollar businesses. When I think of a top hotel chain, I think of the Marriott. Have I already scared away my prospect by thinking, you know what, I'm a hub. I have three employees. This, this, this case study is totally irrelevant to me. I, you've already scared me into thinking you sound expensive, Deepak, because you're giving me case studies of fucking like Disney and I own a fun fair at the bottom of my road and I can barely afford to keep my lights on. So why are you talking to me about what you did at Disney? This is the Disney. It's the wrong case study for the wrong audience unless you've got that audience dialed in. 
do people care or think about reducing hazardous waste? What are you talking about hazardous waste? I just throw my oil away like everyone else. What's hazardous? So begin with where your prospect is at. And that involves getting into the mindset of the prospect. And that's a function of you understanding sales psychology. And that's how with the appropriate inputs, which you won't find, and that's the challenge. It's difficult to find on ChatGPT or on Google because you need to know what you're looking for. And the only true way to safeguard yourself is to read stuff that's passed and had a lot of time and exposure to critics, to cynics, and has stood the test of time. That's actually the key thing to look at. That's what Naval Ravikant talks about, who's a multi-million in Silicon Valley. He's like, everyone should read seminal literature because 80% of everything that you read is derivative. So read the originals. And that's how you can counterintuitively write much fucking better copy. And it's about the framework with which I've used to learn. So the short-term wins are the things that we've discussed just now, and please apply them to every single piece of copy. But the magic or what other people will over the time perceive to be magic will come from reading the right literature to then transform the way that you view content so you can begin to see things literally. And that's why hopefully it makes more sense now. You can see things that other people can't see because I've probably shown you things that you didn't even realize were right in front of you. You're like, fucking hell, that was there the whole time. How did I miss it? Magic.